In March this year, SA Express's business rescue practitioners made an urgent application to the Johannesburg High Court to convert the airline's rescue process into a liquidation because the airline simply didn't have money. Then at the end of the month, employees were informed they wouldn't be paid their salaries and that the unemployment insurance fund wouldn't be an option for them either. So why were hundreds of SA Express staff left in the lurch? I'm living on, on, on hands out. The fridge, it's embarrassing when one does not have salt in, in a house. Even, even when I'm talking to you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm getting emotional. I have two sons. They left because there were no food in the house. They are now staying with their grandmother. It's bad. It's bad. Hearing Silosiala's story, you would think this is another COVID-19 tragedy, but Silo has been a loyal employee of state-owned airline SA Express for 11 years. Like most of the around 700 employees, he has not received a salary since the end of February. Not only is my immediate family affected, even my extended family is affected. In February this year, for the first time ever, a state-owned enterprise, SA Express, was placed in business rescue by one of its creditors, Ziegler SA, which is owed 11.3 million rand by the airline. Now, after failing to get government money for a bailout, the business rescue practitioners had no option but to apply for the airline's liquidation on the 25th of March. On the eve of that application, SA Express employees received communication from business rescue practitioners Daniel Terblanche and Patlanum Combo, citing that due to operational challenges exacerbated by the impact of the spread of coronavirus, that their salaries due on the 25th of March would be delayed. Employee representative and maintenance engineer at SA Express, Papa Mollo, was dismayed by the news. You can imagine I mean, the 24th, most of us are already anxious about our pay. The notice went on to say that they were waiting for a response on a request for emergency funding from the Department of Public Enterprises and that SA Express was obliged to pay wages within seven days. We were never told that we were not going to get paid. So we anticipated that it would be within the seven days that was indicated on the letter. But seven days went by and still no salaries were received. In a written response to carte blanche regarding the plight of the staff, the BRP states that there is no plan in place to support the families under the current circumstances. The shareholder is not willing to advance any funds to the company to relieve the plight of the employees. The BRPs and the acting CEO say they did communicate to the employees that they actually may not get paid. Yes, the possibilities might have been there, but when you're saying my salary has been delayed, you are giving me hope that you're going to be paying me. The BRPs emphasise that from the start, they have been open with employees about the risk of salaries not being paid. They were committed to paying salaries, but after numerous failed attempts to secure post-commencement finance from the shareholder, it was impossible to do so. South African Express used to be a very profitable uh, airline, uh, but from 2012 onwards, the uh, mandate was changed from a pure commercial mandate to include the so-called uh, development mandate. Independent aviation economist Dr. Joachim Vermoorten has followed the airline's journey since its inception in 1994. Uh, government wanted to increase its role in the economy, so total upscaling of the operation. SA Express's ambition for growth increased their capacity, but in South Africa there was not enough demand. In due course, amidst growing operational challenges and lack of funds, the airline was also steeped in corruption and mismanagement. It was claimed that a 2.4 billion uh, fuel contract was awarded uh, to, I think, a music producer. It's also very documented that uh, South African Express uh, was used as a conduit for uh, siphoning of money uh, paid from Northwest uh, to South African Express. In 2018, SA Express received around 1.2 billion rand state bailout, but were instructed to use the funds to pay off government guaranteed debt, leaving the airline with no operational capital. At the end of the day, um, 
its operational uh, safety aspects were very concerning and the Civil Aviation Authority moved in and grounded the airline. The airline received a further 300 million rands in September 2019, by which time their debt had become unmanageable. So the people who are actually suffering in this situation are not the people who are responsible for the situation. IT business analyst Michael Sajwayo has been with SA Express since 1997 and is part of the team representing the unpaid staff. Do you feel the employees are the ones who are left to bear the brunt now? Certainly yes, certainly yes. As you can see, um, I'm, I'm, I'm at my in-laws right now because I cannot afford rent anywhere. Four weeks have passed and most SA Express employees have still not been paid. Many of them are living hand to mouth, especially now during lockdown. Marita Davids has worked for the airline for 26 years and is now an internal auditor for the Quality Assurance Department. There has to be a crew planner and our pilots go overseas to do their training. So we used to personally use our credit cards just to make sure the pilots get there and have accommodation so that they can get the training because if they don't get the training they get grounded and then the aircraft gets grounded but everybody did their little bit to make sure that SA Express stayed in the air. A single mother, Marida, has adopted a two-year-old boy and looks after another child whose family has no means. She also takes care of her father. The day before lockdown, I had 250 rand to my name. That was it. So not only are we not having cash, but we now have to pay for the debit orders that have already gone off. Yesterday was Sunday. Uh, I wake up, tears were just falling down on me. They were just coming, coming down. I, I, we have a group chat as colleagues. And then I told them, guys, I feel so messed up. The tears are just coming down. We have a situation where people have got little children and they cannot afford to buy baby formula or food. Michael and Baba, together with the employees on the chat group, embarked on a crowdfunding campaign to assist colleagues most in need. What we are doing is we were getting 500 trends vouchers uh, per person. As we all know, that, that doesn't even fill a basket. But with our given situations, I truly believe that it, it went a long way. Employees say they're unable to claim from UIF and their pensions and medical aids were frozen as SA Express failed to make those payments even though they were deducted from their payslips. Why is the UIF money deducted from the employees and not, not paid to the UIF? The business rescue practitioners confirmed that this was in fact the case and that the company historically failed to make any UIF contributions for an extended period. This was the position prior to the business rescue proceedings. However, the BRPs managed to extend the cover for two of the medical aids to month end. Marida and her father are both diabetics and her father depends on her for financial support. And he's on medication, none of which is got this month because I didn't have the money. How's your dad going to survive without the meds? He's not because he's, his sugar levels we've taken and he yesterday it was on 27 and he can go into a sugar a diabetic coma anytime. At the 11th hour, the Department of Public Enterprises seems to have come up with a plan for staff salaries. They sent a response in writing on Thursday the 23rd of April stating that there is some payout forthcoming from the UIF, adding, regrettably this situation is the result of wholesale corruption at this entity for which the people concerned still have to face consequences. On hearing of the UIF payment of 5.7 million rands, unions NUMSA and SACA were outraged as the monthly SA Express salary bill amounts to around 25 million rands. It seems that every SACS employee will get a maximum of around 7,000 rand, which of course is unable to cover their basic needs. Someone needs to come to the party, you know, including the shareholder, for months and years in advance, we raised the alarm about decision-making, about 
poor management, about looting, about corruption, and we were ignored. And it's now members and ordinary families who must pay the highest price because of a failure in leadership. We believe we've worked very hard in order to develop some sort of viable plan in order to save uh, sex. And um, it would just be from a lack of willingness should sex not be saved. Would it be best to liquidate it or just try and save it? I think uh, there's not uh, much uh, to save it, to be honest. By the time that the business rescue practitioners got involved, it was already too late. Had they been brought in two or three years ago, it might have been a totally different matter. But liquidation is the last thing that the distressed SA Express employees want to face. It's going to be hard because people that are, will be mostly affected is my family. My life will be destroyed.